Fortnite's newest season is here, and with it, we have some massive changes to competitive. The meta has got a lot of people a little bit worried. Some people are extremely concerned. I want to give my thoughts on how I think this season is going to play out specifically in competitive, but I also want to talk about some of these massive new teams that just got announced. We have confirmed that both Venno and Tayson are moving from EU to NA to play in this FNCS, but they're not playing together. We have confirmed Venno is going to be playing with none other than Clicks, and we have Yomzo and Tayson. We have so many many other massive teams to talk about, I think we're in for one of the most exciting FNCSs in the history of Fortnite. But there's a lot to talk about. Let's jump into it. Before I get into talking about the changes to the meta, I do want to talk about these new teams because we have never seen something like this before. I already touched on two of the big names, Venno coming over to play with Clicks and Tayson coming over to play with Yomzo, but they are not alone. We also have Mixon and Blaha now playing together, which is a tier one EU team, both playing together on NA. I know that we had Mixon and Paco last season, but a lot of people on EU saying they weren't even a real duo. They just came over for a bit of fun. That is not a tier one team. Mixon and Blaha have been one of the best teams on EU of the last couple years. They've been looking phenomenal, and I'm very excited to see how well they do on NA as a double EU duo. But they're not alone. We also have Quanti now teaming up with Yapco, and we have Kylie and Vert. Now, there is two big names I'm not talking about here, Mr. Savage and Mongrel. I had talked about them coming over to NA before any of these players announced they were coming. So what is going on there? Unfortunately, we don't have any more news yet, but seeing all of these teams come over gives me even more hope and even more belief that I was correct and Savage and Mongrel are coming to NA. It is also worth mentioning both Venno and Tayson are two of Blood X's clients. They work under Blood X as their coach. They are now playing with Clix and Yomzo, two of Blood X's clients. We have a lot of the EU guys coming over and I'm guessing in that friend group, they're all a part of. If you already have Venno and Tayson talking about moving, why would Mongrel and Savage not? It makes the most sense for them, in my opinion, the content they're going to make, the numbers they're going to pull are legendary. And honestly, if they're ever going to have a chance to travel and work and just enjoy themselves and experience this, now's the time to do it. But why is that? Why are so many EU teams moving over to NA? It's because this is the last chance to make it for the LAN event. There is no last chance qualifier. Last LAN event, we sent 75 teams and there was qualifiers at the LAN to get it down to 50. This year, there is only 50 duos going. If you're playing on EU or NA this season and you have not already qualified and you don't get top 10 in the grand finals, FNCS is over for you. You are not making the LAN event. So because there's top 10 on EU and NA, a lot of these EU pros thinking it's going to be easy to come over to NA. NA has less than half the player base of EU, but the same amount of qualification spots. And as we just saw, if you missed yesterday's video, the prize pool for all of the cash cups this season are the same for EU and NA. So again, less than half the player base, but the same prize pool and as many qual spots. So we'll see if the EU players are right. Also, a lot of people saying this is finally clicks and Yomzo's chance to win an FNCS. It can only be one of them. It might be neither of them, but we have two of the most decorated players in NA's history and neither of them have an FNCS win. This is finally finally their chance to do it alongside two of the absolute goats of the game. It doesn't stop there though. Obviously these players all splitting up like Yomzo and Ryze has left some insane duos. So as far as the double NA duos competing on NA now, we have Muzz and Trashy after Trashy and Skittles just came fourth in FNCS. There were one place of qualifying that wasn't good enough for them. They've now split. So that obviously means Muzz and Paper have split as well. We have Booga and Aviv. We will no longer have Booga and Ages. They only lasted one season together, but last time Booga and Aviv played together, they came third. And that was la not last FNCS, the one before. So if they can come third again, they're both going to book their tickets to land. Now we have Ages and Ryze, a duo we have never seen play before. Ryze and Yomzo have been together for so long now. I actually don't even remember the last person Ryze played with that wasn't Yomzo. So I'm so excited to see Ages and Ryze. We have Centered making his official full comeback to competitive. He's kind of come and gone, but he's returning with Chance, who I think is a super underrated player. I've been gassing up Chance for quite a while now. The dude's mechanic are extremely, extremely insane. Pair that up with the experience of Sentin. If Sentin is actually grinding, that is going to be a very, very deadly duo. We have Dukes and Sphinx being confirmed to play together as well. We have Degen and Pump. So another player coming back. Degen, legendary player of NA. Hasn't been playing really that much for the last couple chapters. He is making a return to play alongside Pump. And then we have Larson and Yumi. Unfortunately, even after a really, really solid performance from Oliver OG and Larson, the most recent Grands, they have decided to split up. So there's a few players that I don't know who they're playing with right now. Oliver OG, Epic Whale, Threats, Mero, and Paper are some of the big players that I don't know right now who they're playing with. Again, 
all of this could change. This is just who the duos are as of right now. These are not just them impression farming. They're not just baiting to try to get attention. I have verified each of these duos. And as of right now, they are real duos who have every intention of playing together. It is going to be extremely exciting to see how many of the EU players are going to book their ticket to land through North America. This is going to upset some people. Obviously, the point of the land event is to get every single region represented fairly to see which region comes out on top. But ultimately, I'm super excited to see the storyline. There's nothing that says that a lot of these players won't be able to stay and keep competing in NA. Obviously, it's based around whatever visas they get to give them the legal rights to come over and compete for prize money. I'm guessing they're all on different versions of visas. As someone who just traveled to the US recently and worked out of there, it is a difficult process. But if they've got their visas secured properly, again, there are big influential people who have organizations within North America who'd be willing to sponsor them. It is very possible they could have long working visas and stay in NA even after this FNCS. This isn't just a one season thing. A lot of them might actually stick around and become NA players. I'm not talking too much about drop spots as you probably noticed. It's because last season, if you remember, we had like six people claim a certain drop spot. I think it was Brawler's Battleground and literally all six of them ended up leaving. It's just not worth talking about drop spots until we actually start to get into some of the major tournaments. If you missed yesterday's video that I made, tournaments are coming around very, very quick. We have the Solo and Squad Victory Cups coming up in less than a week. And then we have the Duo Cash Cups kicking off just after a week. So we don't have to wait long to see where these guys are dropping and who they're going to be playing with officially. All right, time to give my thoughts on the new season. Now, I've been playing more of the new season than I have of pretty much any of the seasons previously. I've played over 10 hours, so that's probably an indicator to how much I am enjoying it. I am currently having fun. I'm playing with my brother who hasn't really played the game too much before, just jumping in, having some casual fun. Are the vehicles very frustrating? Yes, I understand that frustration massively. Are the new Nitro Fists a little bit overpowered and a little bit annoying? Yes. Are the new medallions pretty crazy? Yes. But overall, I am excited for the new season. Firstly, competitive. There are going to be no vehicles. So right now, I can't really judge my thoughts on the new season too much as far as competitive goes because taking the vehicles out will be a massive change. Trying to watch the game right now, you can't figure out which guns are good, how good is this, how good is that, because it's just Mad Max. Everyone's just driving each other and the only way to win is abusing the vehicles. So once we get to watch an actual tournament where the vehicles aren't allowed, that is when I can really give my true thoughts on how the meta is going to play out. Some of my original thoughts though, I do really actually like the Nitro Fist as far as mobility. They're kind of like a Katana. They are extremely strong. They are very, very chaotic. And that's kind of what I wanted this season. I want a fun meta this season. When everyone's asking me, what are my thoughts? What am I looking forward to? I said, I want a hammer season. I want that chaotic builds exploding, crazy fights, cool mechanics. I want that back. And I think the Nitro Fist can do that. I obviously think they do need to be reworked in a couple of ways. The structure damage right right now and having players just punching into your box, not aiming and just destroying you, it does feel like you're going up against the chains of Hades. And then they also have mobility. The mobility aspect, I'm really excited about, I'm really happy with. If they think it's a little bit broken, maybe tuning it down by like, you know, one charge, maybe adding a bit longer of a cooldown. But ultimately, I think they could be a really cool item. The actual attack ability, yeah, it's a little bit busted. Now, I do want to keep this video mostly focused around competitive. The vehicles are extremely frustrating. I think one of the biggest issues right now with the season is the fact that we didn't get the mechanics that we were supposed to have, or I feel like we should have had to combat the vehicles. We're going to be getting a grapple item we saw in the trailer where you can attach it onto vehicles. If you can do some kind of cool thing where you can like pin the vehicle to the ground with this so it can't just drive away and run from you and you can actually do some kind of maneuvers, that would be really cool. We also had leakers confirmed we're getting some kind of hijacking feature this season, kind of like Grand Theft Auto, like kicking them out of the car. That would have been really cool. I would have had a way to just stop people running, or at least if I'm close to a vehicle and I don't have a vehicle myself, there's something I can do about that. Maybe some kind of item like an anvil launcher or something that does a lot more structure damage would be really fun. I do think they will do something to balance the vehicles in the next little bit of time. Either, you know, reducing the amount of health they have, reducing the amount of damage they have, maybe making it a little bit easy to shoot players who are actually in the car who are, you know, manning the turrets. There are a lot of things they can do. And I think a lot of people on social media are begging for that. So I'm intrigued to see what happens. Obviously, the whole focus of this season is around the vehicles. So if they get nerfed too heavily and they become completely pointless, it does defeat a lot of the purpose of this season. 
I also think one of the biggest things for the frustration this season is we're starting to really feel the, the lack of having a proper game mode that is competitive, that is outside of tournaments. If this season dropped back in the day when we had Arena, the pubs would have had all of the crazy vehicles, all the absolute craziness. Arena wouldn't have had them. Arena used to be more similar to what tournaments were like. So if you didn't want to verse all the crazy goofiness, you could just jump in there. So I understand why there's so many people frustrated on the timeline because you've got pro players and people who want to take the game seriously complaining about the new items and the vehicles. And then you've got the casuals begging them to stop complaining because if they complain too much, the items get nerfed for them. It's neither of their faults. It's why we should have separate game modes for each player base. If you want to jump in and play with all the goofy craziness and, and drive around in a battle bus and run through people, that's totally fine. There should be a game mode for that. That can be public matches. But if you want to get in a practice and actually, you know, you know, be a little bit more skillful with things, you know, you play the game a little bit longer and you don't like all the goofy changes, you can have ranked. I, I think ranked with just the new items, the new map changes, the medallions and the Doomfist without the vehicles would still be extremely fun. And I would absolutely love playing that. So I understand both sides of the argument here and i think they're technically both correct it's just very different player bases that are being forced to both play the same game so it always feels like only one of them can be happy i will say just personally i am extremely excited to watch the new tournaments i think competitive is going to be really fun and with a few little tweaks here and there it could be an exceptional season but again a lot of people aren't seeing that because of the vehicles and i totally get that the new medallions they're very very strong they're going to be a very interesting talking point for teams trying to fight for them it's not just one medallion is by far the best all three of them are very, very strong. But I also feel like the new POIs, the new area of the map, while having a bunch of metal, they don't really actually have that much loot or the loot is very, very spread out. So it's gonna be interesting to see whether people go for these POIs that they might walk out with a little bit worse loot, but have these insane new medallions compared to teams that are going the old POIs. We also have random new mythics coming back, like the gatekeeper shotguns randomly still in. We also have Oscar's frenzy auto shotgun that's moved over to classy courts. We might see Clicks and Venno try to alpha that up so Clicks can get the shotgun shotgun he loved so much there's gonna be a lot of cool storylines coming into competitive and i'm very very excited to stream it but as always if you are enjoying the new season enjoy it don't let other people tell you you shouldn't be enjoying it that's totally okay if you're absolutely hating it i get it i understand the frustration try to go into it maybe with a little bit of an open mind try to use some of the new items to see if you enjoy them but i do think there are going to be hopefully some pretty decent balance changes coming in the next few weeks